Well, it's about 80 degrees today, and I live out of a van that doesn't have air conditioning. So that was a reminder that I need to do something to keep myself comfortable. So I went to the store and I bought a $20 air cooler. Now the question is, will this $20 grocery store air cooler keep me comfortable in my little minivan here? And spoiler alert, no, this will not cool my van down. But I bought it anyway because I have been using one very similar to it uh, for the last eight years. Unfortunately, this one's been giving me some trouble. Uh, so I decided to replace it uh, with one that's very similar and I'm hoping that it will do as good of a job as this. Although realizing that it won't cool my van down uh, works a little bit differently than that. Uh, we'll get into that here, uh, but because I gave the spoiler straight away here, that means that uh, you don't need to watch the rest of this video. So uh, be sure to like, comment, uh, subscribe, and hit that bell uh, for future updates. Okay, now that everybody else is gone, these things are what I would call a swamp cooler. Uh, sometimes they call them an air conditioner, and I think that's what this one was labeled as when I bought it years ago. Uh, the trouble with this one is uh, when I got it out, I had to fix it in order to get it to work. And by fixing it, it means I uh, slammed it very hard with my fist and it started working. Uh, but it still has some trouble, uh, like the little fins on this are broke, so you can't direct the airflow. Very important with these things that you need to be able to direct the airflow with these. Uh, and this thing is a real pain to use. Uh, it leaks like crazy because of the design of it. Hopefully this new one will work a little bit better, or at least I hope this new one works as well as the old one worked when the old one was new, because when the old one was new, it worked quite well. And I relied on it every summer, although last summer I probably only used it about half a dozen times. And I call these a swamp cooler because that's how they cool. They add moisture into the air to cool the air down. So here's another spoiler. Uh, if you live in an area that is humid, so the south, Florida, someplace like that, uh, you d don't want to waste your time with one of these. Uh, you're air is going to already be wet. There's no way that adding more moisture into the air will cool it down. So they're just a waste of time for anybody in a damp environment. Now I'm usually in the west coast and in a drier area of the west coast. So I've found that these work pretty well. Uh, even my time in Seattle, I've spent quite a bit of time in Seattle, they still worked pretty good there too, which is surprising to me. Uh, they do work better though the drier the outside air. So if I'm in, say, Southern California in the deserts, works much better than in Seattle. So just to give you kind of a little idea of how these things work, uh, they are really a swamp cooler, which is something I am very familiar with because I grew up using swamp coolers in Southern California. Uh, lots of family and friends actually use swamp coolers to cool their houses instead of an air conditioner. And in fact, when I had a house, two summers uh, I had just a swamp cooler. That was a much bigger version of one of these. Uh, and it worked reasonably well. Um, not great, but it was all I had. I couldn't afford an air conditioner, so uh, that's what I used. And so uh, because I'm familiar with them, uh, I took a chance on this older one years ago. And like I said, this has worked pretty well for me, uh, keeping in mind that I don't get in environments that are very damp out. So because I'm in drier climates, uh, these things usually work well. I'm not quite sure about this one because this one is just a little cheapy grocery store model. I bought this at a grocery outlet. Uh, so uh, there are other places to buy them. Uh, there are some TV, as seen on TV versions of them that are sold at Walmart uh, for about the same price. Uh, the reason I went with this one is because it's supposed to run off a of USB where the ones at Walmart you need and you need to plug them into an AC outlet, which is something I don't really have. And there's the USB plug there. They provide the cable. That's cool. Uh, not the best quality USB cable, but um, there it is. Hopefully it'll be long enough. I think it said it was four feet. Uh, one thing I'm noticing already is I do like the size of this unit. It's just a little bit smaller than the older one. And that's good for me because I am a little bit short on space 
here living out of a minivan. So, so far, so good. Now, when I said I don't have an AC plug to plug this into, that's only partially true. As you can see, I do have this power pack here, which does have AC inputs. I rarely use this thing. I normally try to use my solar that is uh, built into my van here. So everything that you see, the lights and everything, all run off of a battery that's under my bed that is uh, recharged by solar panels on top of my van. And that's what I prefer to use. I try to keep this just as backup, but I pulled this out because it's gonna be a little easier to uh, test the cooler with. Uh, now I've got it all unwrapped. Uh, there's another thing I like about this uh, versus the old uh, version of one that I had here. Uh, this filter that this new one has is washable, where the old one was not washable. And that's another reason why kind of need to stop using the old one. The old filter is a paper filter and it's getting a little bit of white on it, which I think is probably mold buildup. So that's another reason why I don't want to use it. Uh, so this one's kind of cool that they give you a washable filter. So how these swamp coolers work is they drip uh, water over a filter that uh, would absorb a little bit of water. And then as the air moves through it, uh, it just adds a little bit of moisture to the air and that effect cools the air down. Uh, and again, I've always called them a swamp cooler. So let me put some water in this. And this is another thing that's better about this one versus uh, this style. Uh, there are still some like this style where you have to take them apart uh, to kind of get to the filter assembly and all. Uh, and in fact, uh, this one has a little water like tank that you would pull out from the top and uh, fill up and then drop in. This looks nice, but this this method leaks all over the place. Uh, so I'm hoping that this new one is not going to leak, but let me fill it up with water now and see if that actually is the case. Okay, so I've got a little water in there. Let me plug this in here. Okay, so I've had it running for a few minutes, and the nice thing about running it off of the UPEZ battery pack here is I can get an idea of how much power it's drawing. So it's pulling four watts on high, and it seems to pull about two watts on low. And it does have three settings on it, three fan speed settings. Uh, I guess four, actually. So there's a low, a medium, and a high. And I think the low and medium are pretty well useless, but on high, it does seem to be moving a little bit of cooler air. Uh, so it seems like it's working pretty well. Um, it does have another useless feature, uh, which you might not be able to see here, but there's a little LED light and it's either one static color or it seems to rotate uh, through some colors like a rainbow effect. I don't like any of those. So you got to turn that off every time you turn the unit on if you don't want to see any light out of it. Uh, other than that, it seems like it's working pretty good. I'm going to let it go for a few more minutes and see just how well it works. Uh, I was noticing in the instruction manual here, it does say that uh, you should have humidity levels below 50%. I think that's too high personally, but it does tip you off there that this is not a unit to use uh, if you are in a humid environment. So it's only been a few minutes, but I've already realized that there's a huge problem with this, uh, and that's the cord. Uh, four feet of cord is just not nearly long enough. So I rooted around and found that I do have a USB extension cable. I don't remember where I bought this. I actually had this longer than I've had my van, so that's, well, got to be more than eight and a half years now. So uh, yeah, I don't know where to get one of these exactly, but glad I have it. I'm going to try to plug this in so that I can uh, put the UPEZ battery pack down on the floor where it belongs because it's getting to be about coffee time and I can't run my stove with uh, the battery pack sitting up here. So hopefully this will work. Okay, the extension cord works great. So I'm going to let that run and it is coffee time, but 
I'm not going to turn my stove on because it is 80 degrees after all. So instead of running my stove, which is 15,000 BTU and would defeat the purpose of cooling the van down with the new air cooler, I'm going to use my little cordless kettle here. I don't use this very often because quite frankly, it's really not very good. Uh, but it's great for cases like this where we've got plenty of sunshine out today where I can easily recharge my battery pack, which I'm going to plug this into. Uh, and it's nice just to be able to have hot water for my coffee and still be able to enjoy my coffee, but not heat the van up. So one of the few cases where this has actually been helpful to have, but uh, I don't recommend this one in particular. Uh, you know, it's be nice to have one that actually worked well, uh, but uh, I think this cost me about 40 bucks. So I'm hesitant to get rid of it uh, because it does work for limited cases like a case like today. Okay, I've got this down on the floor. This is where I like to run this thing because it's a little bit tipsy. This cord is really stiff and I found that if I have this up on my counter and just kind of brush against this cord, it tends to want to just knock this thing over. Uh, and that's kind of a problem if it's hot and it does heat up fairly fast. Uh, I think it does about seven minutes or eight minutes uh, to boil uh, a cup of water. There's a little mark inside to tell you how much you can put in this thing. And uh, it, it does boil pretty good and pretty efficiently. Uh, although for my UPEZ battery pack, that does equal about three hours of recharge time when I do plug this back into my solar panel to recharge the battery. So uh, that's another reason why I don't use this very often. It's just one cup of coffee equaling three hours of solar recharging. Kind of a lot of time for me. That's not to say coffee isn't worth the effort. It always is worth the effort, especially when you've got some really good coffee like this one. Uh, this is from a little town called Sebastopol that's right near Santa Rosa here. Uh, and this is just remarkably good stuff. I, I like their logo too, this little uh, astronauts, um, even though we all know that, you know, we didn't actually ever go out to space and we've never actually gotten to the moon. Um, but this is really good stuff. Uh, I have been ripping through this bag because it's just so good. I can't help but to drink it. Even on a hotter day, uh, I still drink way more of this than I really should. This is one of those times where I should have some kind of crappy coffee on hand so that I don't drink quite so much on a warmer day. But uh, this is just so, so good. I am happy to have it and I'm definitely ready for another cup right now. Although I have a few minutes more to wait for that kettle to boil because it's not quite as fast as my 15,000 BTU cooktop. Uh, but like I said, uh, better to run it on a hot day like today or a warm day like today uh, so that we can get a good test on how this cooler is going. And it's still working just fine, it seems. One little issue I've had with this is there's no pour spout. So normally I pour this into my kettle and then pour it into the AeroPress. But I'm going to try to do this without. This may not go well. I got a little spilling there, but not too bad. It's the one thing, well, that's another thing about this little kettle that I'm not crazy about is uh, there's no pour spout on it, which doesn't make any sense. Why would they not add a pour spout? They do have a little uh, clip in the lid there, and I thought maybe I'd try to use that as a pour spout. I uh, very nearly burned myself badly trying to do that because uh, it doesn't pour out of there. It just pours all the way around the outside uh, if you try to pour with a lid on. So I learned, learned that the hard way. Top this up here without... Okay, that didn't go too bad. Okay, that went a little better than it usually goes. I usually spill water everywhere and kind of burn myself a little bit when I use this little kettle. But uh, yeah, it's not, it's not terrible. It's just not, uh, it's just, it just has a bunch of little issues with it. Uh, it could have had a slightly better design, but uh, I'm, I'm 
somewhat glad I purchased it. Uh, I have been looking for a better quality one that doesn't have all the issues that this one has, uh, but I just haven't been able to find one that is any better than this one is. So for the meantime, I'll just keep it around for the days like today where it's especially useful for me. Well, since I'm here at a park that has some trash cans that I can use, I want to get rid of the old packaging from the new cooler and also get rid of the old cooler. But I'm not just going to throw this out. I think I want to tear into it and see if I can get the computer fan out of it. They use 12 volt computer fans for these and they're just a little cheap uh, two speed uh, computer fan. But I find that uh, they can be useful for other reasons. So maybe I'll try to break into this and uh, scavenge some parts off of it before I throw the rest of it out. Uh, maybe I shouldn't leave the coffee cup there. That's going to be a disaster if I knock that over. That'll be a little safer. See, I don't know how to get into this. I don't really see any exposed screws. But the good thing is, because I'm not saving this, I don't think it's worth saving. Uh, I don't have to worry about breaking it, do I? So I'll just tear into it. Okay, so I take that back. There are some exposed screws in here, but with the screwdriver that I have, I can't get down into the slots to uh, unscrew them. So I'm just breaking it apart. It's working. Okay, I got the fan out. Uh, once I had a few pieces cracked open, uh, I was able to get to the rest of the screws and then it made getting the rest of it apart pretty easy. Uh, but I can't help but to think that this is kind of a silly endeavor. Uh, I've got two big bags of spare parts and they're electrical supplies and plumbing supplies, things like that. Uh, things that have uh, I found that have broke often in the past, I just try to keep on hand. And then there's a few things like fans. Um, I actually have another 12 volt fan just like this one that I use occasionally. Uh, I got it the same way, just out of something I scavenged. And uh, it's been useful occasionally. Uh, I've had some trouble with my Max Air roof vent fan. And so it was nice to have a fan just waiting around and that I could just quickly put into use. Uh, but I don't really have space for all these parts. So it's just silly for me to keep acquiring parts. Um, but I'm going to hold on to this for a little while. And I think the next thing I need to do is to go through my parts, those two big bags of parts, and just whittle down the things that I don't need because I probably don't need two fans. Um, I probably don't need all the plumbing supplies that I have on hand and all the electrical supplies I have on hand. Uh, just a little reminder that uh, I'm just carrying around too much stuff. But I don't need to carry around this garbage anymore, so I'm going to go find a trash can and clean up a little bit before I get back to my cup of coffee. Always one last sip. Okay, this is interesting. I just threw the trash out, got rid of all that, and I plugged my battery pack into my solar panel system. So instead of the second solar panel that I have on my van charging my house battery, it's now charging the battery pack. Uh, I do this quite often because I don't drive enough to keep this charged up, and I never have a place to plug this in. So this is the way I usually keep it charged up. Uh, just wait till my uh, house battery is fully charged and then I can just plug it into one of the solar panels there. So that's what I've done now. But coming back here, I've noticed that it's that the little air cooler is now drawing five watts of power where before it was only drawing four watts. I wonder if that's because I'm using the extension cord. Maybe somebody that knows more about electric can tell me if that's right. But uh, I'm not sure. That's just a guess, and it's the only thing I can think of. So this might be a good time to talk about how I stay cool here in the van. I have one method that I utilize more than anything else. We'll talk about that later uh, if you want to stick around in here. The number one thing that I do to stay cool, uh, but 
I don't have too much to worry about staying cool in this particular van because this is a cargo van, meaning there's no windows. There's no windows back here in my living space. So without windows, uh, the van stays pretty cool. Uh, the outside is white, painted white, of course, and so it reflects the sun really easily. And that means that my back living space here stays very, very cool uh, without me really doing much of anything at all. Now, of course, I do have glass up front. I've got a big, huge windshield and then glass in the doors up front. So I found uh, that I need to separate the two areas off. So that's why I have the curtain. The curtain usually people think is for stealth. Stealth is not something that I worry about at all. In fact, I'm anti-stealth. I do as much as I possibly can to let everybody know that I'm in my van at all times. Uh, stealth is a dirty word to me. It's not something that I ever uh, practice. So this is not here for stealth. Uh, dirty word. Uh, this is here uh, just to keep the heat from the front of the van from migrating into the back of the van. So these here are uh, blackout curtains, and these blackout curtains are here just because I don't like the look of the sleeping bag that I'm using as some insulation uh, between the front and the back cab. Uh, so I've cut the sleeping bag and set it up so that the zipper is down the center here. So I can actually get through. Uh, I do have another set of blackout curtains on the other side. And again, that's just because I like the look of them better than the sleeping bag. Um, they do provide a little bit more insulation too. So that's a, it's kind of a nice thing to use blackout curtains because they cut down a little bit of noise and they do help with the heat and cold. Uh, that's another reason with this too. Uh, in the winter time, it does help keep it warmer back here, but obviously we're talking about uh, dealing with heat right now. So this means I can get through, I can peek through, I can look through. Uh, it's not something I generally ever do because it's pretty tight between the two front seats here. This being a minivan, there's not a lot of space to kind of crawl through there. Something I used to do back when I thought stealth was an important thing, I used to crawl through and I just don't do that anymore. I'm a lot older now too, as you know, it's eight years on, so I'm uh, eight years older and not quite as limber. Uh, so I don't ever really use this to get through, but I will get, open this up and look out just to see uh, outside from time to time. Um, I have tried to open it up from time to time and let some cool air from my air conditioner if I'm driving around uh, get back here. Uh, the thing is though, again, I just don't drive that much. Um, the, last, the last three weeks I've been averaging about three miles a day. So it's not a lot of driving and that's pretty typical for me. I think I'm on track this year to hit about 6,000 miles all year long. Uh, if I keep the pace that I'm going. So utilizing the air conditioner from the van is just a non-issue for me. It's just not gonna work because I just don't drive anywhere. Uh, but keeping the area separated like I'm doing here, uh, not only does it make it look a little bit nicer, uh, but it does help really keep the back of the van just a nice even temperature. Now, of course, keeping the two sections of the van only does so much. I think you really need good air movements, and that's where my Max Air vent fan comes into play. I cannot imagine living in any vehicle without really good ventilation, and so that's what this gives me. Uh, yes, the screen needs to be cleaned. No, I'm not going to clean it right now anyway. Uh, but this, this fan has been fantastic. Um, I've had some trouble with it. I've had to bodge it back together from time to time. But uh, again, it's just been fantastic. Uh, just those times where you need some good air circulation, these things are great. Now you do need to have uh, some air for the fan to pull from. Uh, most people roll their windows down up front, but of course I don't want to do that because that would uh, bring that hot air from the front back to the back. And so I don't want to do that. So I actually drilled a hole in my floor 
uh, so that way the, the vent fan can run with all the doors and windows closed. And no, I don't encourage anybody else to drill a hole in their floor. I know it freaks a lot of people out, but I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, it's just been a positive for me. Uh, no exhaust has come in through the van. Uh, of course, I very rarely drive while I'm sleeping back here. So, you know, as far as I know, no exhaust has come back into the van uh, when I'm driving. Uh, so it's just been a non-issue for me, but um, yeah, I'm not recommending anybody else do it, but it's worked really well for me. And uh, normally I run this fan all the time. Uh, in fact, it would be on right now, except it is a little bit noisy and my microphone picks up on that noise and amplifies it a lot. So I've left it off just because uh, of the microphone situation. Uh, but it does give me a, a little extra test on the little air cooler here, which is still running. You could probably still hear it going here. Um, it's, you know, it's doing fine so far. One of the issues I always have is uh, as soon as it gets a little bit warm, I just lose my appetite. So I'm gonna force myself to eat a sandwich. I'll just make a little one. I think I'm just gonna make a cheese sandwich uh, because I gotta eat something even though I'm not really hungry. I'll, uh, I'll get hungry like it was warm yesterday and I wasn't hungry all day and uh, I think I had some yogurt and stuff and some chips that was about it uh, but then as soon as the sun went down and it got cool out then I got really hungry I was ravenous so I don't want to have that happen today so I'm trying to stay on top of it okay here we go a little mayonnaise a little yellow bird and a little bit of cheese there. I never said I was eating healthy. I just said I was eating a sandwich. Well, I'm enjoying the sunshine out. I am not exactly enjoying the temperatures, although it's only about 80 degrees, so not terribly bad, but a little warmer than I would prefer to be. Uh, the cooler is doing its job. Uh, I'll let you know at the end of the day my whole thoughts on that, but it seems to be doing all right. Um, the nice thing about having the sun, though, is that I now have my freezer running. So uh, this fridge-freezer combination that I have, I can set it up to run either as a fridge or a freezer or both a combination. So that's what I have it running on right now, which means I've got some ice cream in here. So I'm going to enjoy some ice cream for a little bit. Uh, and. It's pretty nice to be able to have uh, my freezer back going. Uh, it's something that I run just in the uh, summertime. I don't usually have the freezer running in the wintertime just because it draws a little bit too much power. Uh, this is probably a good time just to talk about uh, why I don't have an air conditioner, an actual AC, uh, and that's just because my solar power system just can't handle that much power. Uh, I have just enough power to run this fridge year round. And then in the summertime, in the spring and summer, a little bit into the fall, depending on where I'm at, I have enough power to, to power a uh, freezer part of the fridge. Uh, and it's, it's not a very big freezer, it's just a small section of it here. So that's just to give you kind of an idea of the limited power that my solar system makes. Uh, it's plenty of power for me, but I can't run everything all the time. I certainly can't run an AC in the summertime, uh, but it does give me enough to keep uh, the freezer going. Uh, and it gives me the little extra nice thing of having ice cream once in a while. I don't have ice cream a lot these days anymore, but I do take advantage of it when I do have uh, the power. I do uh, keep some ice cream around from time to time. I'm waiting to see some of the comments about my choice of ice cream. I like mint chip ice cream. I think it's really good. I don't know why it's so controversial though. It seems like a lot of people just do not like it at all. And maybe it's the mint and the chocolate together. Maybe that's what people object to. Because I guess I can understand that. But the mint ice cream with little chocolate chips in it? Yeah, one of my favorites. Trader Joe's makes a really good one if you haven't tried theirs. Uh, they're, theirs is one of the best. My favorite is from a company called Strauss, which is a local company here uh, to the Bay Area. And that's my absolute favorite, but it is double the price of Trader Joe's. So I just usually buy the Trader Joe's. 
uh, if I'm gonna buy any ice cream at all. Um, you know, it's funny, I came to this park this morning because it's usually pretty quiet, and I pull up here and you can see that there's this, uh, I think it's pickleball, and I think it must be a tournament because there's, there's like a bunch of buses and they've bussed a bunch of people in here and uh, they're really having a good time over there. Um, not that I know what pickleball is, but uh, I'm just guessing it's not tennis, so uh, pickleball is my guess. Uh, it is kind of tough on me when I have situations like this because I generally don't like to record people. Now, they're far away in the background. I don't mind so much because you can't really pick out anybody's faces, but I generally don't like to record people. And so I pulled up here this morning and I thought, oh, I picked the wrong park. And I drove across town to get here. And I think it was right about my mileage limit. You know, I said I'd normally been driving about three miles a day. So I didn't really want to drive to another park. I wanted to keep to my mileage limit. But it's been good. It's been quiet. Um, you know, I can hear the tournament going on, but they're, uh, they're, they're doing nicely over there. And uh, looks like they're having fun. So I just got back from a little walkabout around the park. It's getting cooler outside, so I think we can turn this off now and talk about whether it's worth it or not. Uh, so to answer the question, does this $20 grocery store air cooler actually cool my van down? Well, it's pretty much like I had thought earlier. Uh, it does not do anything with cooling the van down whatsoever. Uh, it does cool me down as long as it's pointed directly at me. If it's not pointed directly at me, it makes no difference whatsoever in the van itself. In fact, when I was out walking, I forgot to turn my vent fan on. So when I got back here, it was a little warm and stuffy in here. So it just proves that this doesn't really do much on its own. Now, when it's working and it's pointed directly at me, uh, it does provide quite a bit of cooling. Um, I don't think it works quite as well as the old cooler that I had, and I think that that's because this one's a little stingy on the water. Uh, this one drips very little water onto the pads, and so it doesn't cool quite as well as the old one did. Um, the benefit with that, of course, is that you don't have to fill the chamber quite as often. So it does, uh, it does use less water, which means it cools for a little bit longer, but uh, the, you know, the drawback with that is it doesn't cool as well as it could if it dripped a little bit more water onto the pads. Now this did have me think about how a lot of people like to put ice in their coolers, uh, but a real EFAP cooler, a real evaporative cooler or swamp cooler should work perfectly fine without any ice. Now, I know this from using a swamp cooler in my house for all those years, but there seems to be this opinion that they will work better if you put ice cubes in them. Uh, a real evap cooler doesn't need the ice, but I think that uh, people have that in their mind because this would probably benefit from putting some ice in it uh, and cooling down the water. Just because it's not using quite as much water, it would probably work a lot better. Now, I don't have any ice to put in mine. Uh, I don't use ice for any reason whatsoever. I never drink cold drinks, and so I never have any ice in my freezer. So it's not gonna be an option for me to put ice in this. Uh, plus, if you really look at that, uh, you need a lot of electric to make ice. So it's not really, I don't think it really works out that well. Um, but if it helps, I'm sure, you know, a lot of people do it because it certainly would help, uh, at least this style. Now, my old one didn't need any ice. It worked perfectly fine without it. Uh, also, you really couldn't get ice in that one. You could cool the water down, put cold water in it. Uh, again, that's not something I'm going to do because I don't really use cold water for anything. So I'm not going to drink it. So uh, I'm not going to go through the process of using my electricity, my meager electricity to cool uh, water or make ice. I uh, just thought I'd mention that. But all in all, I think it works perfectly fine. Um, I'm happy with it. It's not made as well as the old one. It doesn't cool quite as well as the old one, but they stopped making the old one years ago, so it's not like I could have bought one of those anyway. So I'm happy with this one. Uh, it works good enough uh, for me, mostly because of my number one reason uh, that I use to stay cool. Uh, the best way to stay cool is to just avoid hot areas. Uh, so normally I try to move myself to an 
area that is cooler. So either go up in elevation to get away from the heat, or what I think is better is to get near a body of water. And my preference is the Pacific Ocean. I think that's just the best place to be. You know, the air is going to be cool there. Uh, you can always get in the ocean if you need to cool down too, but uh, it's always cooler at the ocean. But you know, rivers, streams, lakes, whatever, uh, that's the way to go. That's my number one best suggestion for staying cool. That's what I use to stay cool is just move someplace if you can. And I can, uh, at least at the moment, I can move around a little bit when I need to. And uh, I definitely need to because I just don't do well with temperature extremes anymore. So if it gets too hot in an area, I move. Uh, and if it gets too cold in an area, I move again. So that's how I stay cool. Uh, the van itself does stay fairly cool. I don't have to do a whole lot to keep it cool, but it is nice to have little devices that will help me if I do wind up in a spot like here. Today it's, uh, you know, about 80 degrees. Uh, I normally am out of an area when it gets to be that warm, but we just have a little heat wave going on. So nice to have something on hand that I can just plug in and use. Uh, it's smaller than the old one too, so that there's another plus I think I forgot to mention. So some good things about this, uh, you know, I think if you're in a situation like me, it would definitely be a good uh, purchase for you. I don't think $20 is much to spend on something if it actually cools you down. And so it actually works. Just realize it's not going to cool your van down. It's only going to cool you down. Uh, if you've got a pet, this is probably not going to be the way to go either. You know, you're probably going to want a real AC unit and not one of these things. Uh, so there, there's my there's my thoughts on these. And uh, I think that's about it. Uh, the day's winding down here. So I'm going to have to go find a place to park for the night. And um, I'm still not hungry yet. So maybe I'll eat some more ice cream <laughs> and have some more coffee too, of course. Uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.